What's up guys, Austin back with another rowing video. And today, we're gonna discuss weightlifting and the difference between high rep and low rep weightlifting and the effects that that can have on your rowing. Essentially, which one would be better for you? Now, before we get into things, I just wanna let you know you cannot rely on weightlifting to make you the best rower possible. Weightlifting is such a small component of the actual fitness involved in rowing, especially if you're doing a competitive distance like 2,000 meters, yes, it's important, but it's not as important as sitting your butt down back on the machine and putting in steady state miles. But for those of you that are really looking to you know, increase your weight, especially if you're a lean, thin guy and you wanna try to add on a little mass for rowing, weightlifting is a great option. Now, when we look at rowing as a sport, it's classified as a power endurance sport. Now, unlike something like running, which is a strict endurance sport, where being as lean and thin as possible is actually an advantage, in rowing, the, if you have extra weight on you, that actually can be an advantage as long as you can pull your weight. Which, unlike in long distance running, bigger, taller guys excel more at rowing because they have larger mass and they can use that mass to produce higher speeds, both on the rowing machine and in the boat as well. But obviously there are some incredible lightweights that are out there as well. You know, the guys that are under about 160 pounds or so. Same with females as well, guys, lightweights and heavyweights. Rowing is a weight management sport. So yes, you can be bigger and still excel, but you have to manage your weight. So when it comes to weightlifting for rowing, obviously we can try to gain some advantage with that because we can focus on developing the strength and size of the main muscle groups that are involved in rowing. Now I did an old video about, you know, four key exercises for weightlifting that you should probably start off with. I'll leave a link to that in the description below this video. Okay, so high reps or low reps, which one is gonna be better? Well, first we have to understand the different muscle fiber types that our muscles have. There's three main types. There's type one, there's type 2A, and there's type 2B, otherwise known as type 2X. Sometimes you'll see it one way or the other. So three main muscle types. Now type one fibers are our slow twitch fibers. You might have heard that word before, slow twitch. And that just has to do with the, the speed at which the muscle contracts, the velocity of the shortening. Now with these type one fibers, these are our highly oxidative fibers. These are the ones that are filled with mitochondria and provide you with the sustainable energy to accomplish endurance-based efforts. And then we've got our type two fibers. And I'll start with type 2B. The type 2B fibers, they are larger muscle fibers and they have a very quick shortening velocity but don't have a lot of oxidative capacity to them. They don't have a lot of mitochondria and thus they fatigue very, very quickly. And so type 2A sort of lie in the middle of the road there. They are faster at shortening than the type 1 fibers, but they also have that higher oxidative capacity compared to the type 2B fibers. Now when we think of these different muscle fiber types, we have to think of the size principle. And what that comes down to is when your muscles are faced with a resistance, it has to contract to overcome some sort of resistance load, your body will activate the fibers in order of smallest to largest. So when it comes to weightlifting, the only time our type 2B fibers really get activated are from the heaviest loads possible. We're talking really low reps, like one to three to five rep maximum, where our muscles are working at their absolute hardest to overcome the load. And because these type 2B fibers in general don't have a lot of oxidative capacity, they don't really do well with rowing. With rowing, especially in a 2,000 meter race, you're gonna be rowing about 240 strokes, give or take a few. That's a lot of reps. That's a lot of time for your muscles to sustain power output. So we're much better off trying to grow our type 2A fibers instead of the type 2B. And so to focus on the type 2A fibers, again, we talk about that sort of middle of the road. So we're much better off using repetition ranges, somewhere between eight to 12, maybe 12 to 15, sort of in that hypertrophy range of the muscle, where yes, you will actually gain strength, you will gain muscle size, but again, we're focusing on increasing the number of those type 2A fibers compared to the type 2B. Now, as far as what the current scientific evidence shows us, it's not clear cut. As far as the distribution of fibers from individual to individual, there is a genetic component to that. Some people have more type 1 compared to type 2A compared to type 2B. Uh, as far as training goes, uh, training has shown to change primarily the type 2A and type 2B. 
depending on the type of training that you do, you can change those fiber types around. However, there's not a lot of science showing the difference between changing your type ones to type twos or type twos to type ones. But like I said, the evidence isn't totally clear. So to kind of summarize all this scientific hoobla <laughs> stuff, rowing is a power endurance sport where type one fibers are gonna be the primary source of energy and what your body is gonna to use to help you perform through a 2000 meter effort. However, there is that anaerobic component that utilizes those type two fibers, especially for the start and for the finish of a rowing race. When it comes to training those type two fibers, we've got type two A and type two B. Whereas type 2B fibers do not have a lot of oxidative capacity, they fatigue extremely quickly, and so they're not very useful to rowing in general. Whereas type 2A fibers, they give us that anaerobic power, but also do have a bit of oxidative capacity to them. So we're much better off training those fibers, and we can do that by sort of shooting for a middle to higher rep range with our weightlifting sets. Because currently the science tells us that we can transition some fibers from type 2B to type 2A, that transition is much more likely than the actual transition of fibers from type 2 to type 1, or type 1 to type 2. So I know I kind of just threw a bunch of information out you all quickly, but guys, like I said, the scientific evidence isn't completely clear that's out there. Do not focus all of your training efforts on weightlifting. Couple times a week, maximum. Your focus to get better at rowing should be happening on that machine or out on the water. The weightlifting can be a tool to help gain some strength and size in your muscles. And as long as you can have the aerobic fitness to use those muscles, then that's how weightlifting is gonna help you out. So guys, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like, let me know what you think down in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer any questions regarding this because I know there was kind of a lot of information that I just kind of spewed out for you. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.